Hi guys, welcome to the channel, Practical Reefer, my name's Mark. Now, today I'm just going to do a quick overview on the XL200. We're going to have a look at how it's uh, developing and maturing a little bit. Some of the corals that are growing, a little mistake that this guy made, um, trying to take a coral off a frag plug. Um, and also, I'm starting to get corals placed now, and then the, like the zoas will eventually get into rock park, I think. And we're going to have a look at the mushroom sump, which is essentially what it's turned into, just filled with mushrooms, a bit of GSP, um, plenty going on in there. And then also have a little look at the nano, I've not shown anyone that for a long time. Um, it's kind of been, it's kind of been left behind because of the reefer, but also I need to make a bit of a decision what to do with it or how I'm going to change it. Um, and then we also have the 10 gallon, which I was kind of closing down, but I've kind of flipped some switches back on. So we'll, we'll have a look at that and we'll make some decisions. Um, and you understand why I've done that with 10 gallon. Um, so that'll be a cool little project. Hopefully it won't use too much electricity and uh, it'll be a bit of fun. And it'll help me with the nano, which I've got a slight issue. And it's currently very windy and rainy and that's the wind howling. But let's have a look at the reefer and we'll come back. So guys, into the reefer, let's have a look. Now, just can't see the darkness there, focus in. Uh, I've swapped out the CP25, which was the gyre, for the SLW20, which seems to be doing a much better job. Um, kind of helping with the flow and nothing's getting blown about too badly at the bottom. Um, same there with the, the mollies. So just having a look at the, the corals, as I say, we've got the, the zoas here. Um, lost a few before, I think, when they were in a the sump, they didn't have enough flow and they were getting a bit upset. Now I'm getting some really good coralline growth around the bottom of this one, um, the bottom here, and it's actually growing on the, the rack and things as well. Not getting a good focus there. And we've got plenty of dove snail eggs there, and we do have, let's just see if I can film it. Um, it's going to be very hard to focus. So there is an adult dove snail, which you can see. And what I'm trying to do, is, there we go, is there's a tiny little baby there off to the right. So that's full size. And then we've got this little one, which it's hard to focus on. And you'll see as well, loads of uh, flecks of coralline algae on that little frag rack. I was going to remove that, and then it had loads of stuffed snail eggs and bits of coralline algae, and I thought, oh, I'll just leave it. Same with this one. Uh, not the best focus there. We've got loads of coralline algae on there, and you can see how the, the cleanup crew are um, clearing that. Good little polyp extension there on the piece of SPS. It's quite hard to focus from the, the side. Um, again there, polyps are out. And then also, a big thing that's happened is my hammer garden. Let me zoom back out. So I've got that in there, which probably not the best view. So I've got an ultra green, I've got a teal, um, a splatter hammer, and then the, the copper hammer. So they've all been secured down apart from the splatter, which is kind of just really well jammed into the rock. Most of them are still on their frag plugs, um, but they're doing pretty well there. Just get a view from the side, actually looks better. Got that there. Also, the torches, which were done a, a few weeks ago. Now, most of these are pretty happy. Um, the Indo Gold Streak, which is a nicer one. Now, I will say as well with this tank, um, this is very much probably true to colour. It's quite a white light. I could go bluer, but um, I like to stick to more natural colour. So, But there's still good colour in there. These three torches on the left, I think they're maybe getting a little bit too much flow, so I might have to move them and do something else. Um, might even try the hammers over because they seem pretty happy. And then I've also got the, the big hammer there, which I just haven't moved yet. That needs frag before I can mount that up with the other hammers. And then I've got the frog spawn there, which is uh, doing well. I've also got the bicolor frog spawn, which fell off the, the perch there, um, but it's quite happy on the sand bed. So. I'll leave it for now until I get into the, the tank. And then the other frog spawn is doing really well. I had a little frog spawn, which you can see, and I was trying to get it off of this piece of tile. Almost looks like slate, but I don't think it is. Um, that came from the, the retailer, and trying to get it off, and I've absolutely split it. Um, unfortunately, it was doing well for a week or two. I just kind of left it, um, or a week, sorry. Um, and then it obviously just gave way, but unfortunately I've split that. It was quite a small head, and it was on this sort of piece of slate. Well, it looks like slate, so it was kind of a bit weird. I thought I'll try and get that off and just mount it onto the rock quite properly. Um, and unfortunately that went very badly. The acans are doing quite happy. Now the lights have not been long, long on. That orange acan on the left puffs up really nicely. Um, it's quite happy actually, to be fair. 
Um, I did say in my last video it was it was a bit funny, but now it's sitting there, it's quite happy. Um, and then my other rainbow can, and then I've got this uh, ultra green, which is now facing away because I've put it on the sand bed. Um, these were the ones that were all attacked by the peppermint shrimp quite some time ago, so they're all doing quite well. Um, I've got my gony there, which is go going well. Now, other thing as well is I have a good there's more coralline in there. Now. Else, have we got the good size brittle star in there? There's absolutely loads of these. Um, I've got bits of what looks like sponge there. If someone can identify that, that would be brilliant. Looks like sponge to me. Um, there's always, I mean, there's good bits of coralline on there growing as well. And there's more coralline growing on that base rock as well. That actually needs to be uncovered. There's quite a bit of uh, rock there, or uh, scape, or, you know, space for corals. And I'm getting a bit of algae in the bottom, but I think I do need to get something to sift sand. And I've got that cracking little Duncan coral there. So, all pretty happy. I do, uh, probably one of my <laughs> weirdly favourite things is just seeing stuff breeding like that, that little dove snail. That's really, really cool. Um, but all doing pretty well. I think I don't need to play with those torches, maybe play with the flow a bit. Um, they seem fairly happy, but they're just a bit deflated compared to the, the more gold uh, Indo. So we'll have a play. We'll see how they do. They're, nothing's nothing's dying. They're all open and swaying, but that one just looks so much better. So we'll come back to that. We'll see how we get on. But we'll go over and we'll have a look at the Nano just now as well. Whoops. Before the Nano. Coming back to the sump. Now I'm still using the stock ATO. Um, I've got my £60 skimmer which was just cleaned out yesterday and it's back on the job. Um, that's pretty decent actually. It was really really full. It lasted well over a week as well. So in the mushrooms, so we've got this uh, green mushroom here. I've got a Yuma. There's a Yuma baby just behind it. Um, there's a, I believe that's a St. Thomas in the middle. Is that Superman Discosoma? Um, there's loads of... The, Plenty there, that one looks like it's going to split at the bottom. Um, some other nice green mushrooms, GSP, who's in back out a bit. Uh, another Yuma, which is massive, that came from Jonathan. A lot of these actually came from Jonathan. Two different types of GSP, sorry. Um, a big blue disco, which will probably take over the, the, <laughs> the place if I let it. A nice red disco soma, which I had in the 10 gallon and was getting a bit uh, really super tiny, and it's actually grown quite a bit, so hopefully that gets back to full health and does what it does. Um, quite a number of the same sort of pattern green mushrooms, uh, a really nice green one there, there's a little smaller one as well. Um, and then I've got some which they haven't quite opened up yet, uh, these nice sort of spotty ones. And there's another one in the corner there. So yeah, they're all doing good, that's a cool little sump. Um, probably need to get rid of some as well because there's more of these in the Nano, so we'll go and have a look at that just now. So guys, and here's the Nano, absolutely super basic setup, I've got the um, water bottle ATO, two hanging back filters. For the last month or so, because I haven't pulled the finger out, I have not had a wave maker in this. And I've now just fitted the JBOW or JCOD SLW10, um, which has been, I've had it for months, but it was intended for the reefer, but I bought the 20 for the reefer. It probably would have done the reefer, to be fair. I could have had two of these 10s, but I thought I'll get the two different sizes um, and we'll see. So, clowns are doing good. Um, I've got Molly there, it's a bit of algae in that basket. There's the damsel before he hides. Um, the other Molly that was in the 10 gallon, because that now has no fish in it. My little possum wrasse up the back, if I can get focused. There he is. Um, unfortunately, I did lose my tail splot bent, Blaney. He used to sit in the rock there, he was quite happy. Um, I, c I couldn't see him for a week or two, and I thought, he's maybe died, and he's he's gone into, you know, the rock work somewhere and the, the cleanup crew have had him and it wasn't until the dog was getting rather excited a few weeks ago under the desk and because uh, she's not very often up here and in that corner she I had to fish out the tail spot Benny unfortunately from her mouth um, so I lost him I don't know how he got at the back because I've got the excuse the lights here I've got the clips here you know the the twin wall covers here so unless he's got out of this gap um, I don't know and somehow got over the filter or you know made his way across you know it's quite a quite a journey um, and it's the first fish I've ever lost out of the tank so it's quite disappointing um, so unfortunately the, the tail spot then he's gone um, little changes tank so obviously I took out all the euphilia that I had and that's gone into the reefer 
Um, there's a little bit of what looks like maybe sano there, but I think that's because I've uh, had poor flow. Um, I've had the flow from the hang on backs, so excuse the, the lights there. Um, it's been very, very gentle, so nothing's really been swaying until we've got back. Xenia has gone hell for leather, it's absolutely covered that bit of rock, and it's also now going on to my at the back. So, and the GSP is doing the same, and at one point it was touching the rock at the back, so I might need to just uh, whip that off. Um, the big thing that was probably going to do with the Nano was look at going into rock flowers, so an absolutely stunning one. I mean, that's just different shades of green, and it looks fantastic. So, I've got rock flower there. Uh, excuse the urchin and then I've got another rock flower there. Can I zoom in a bit more? With my shaky hands. Um, so that's another rock flower there with the red centre and the, the grey outside and there's a micro brittle star just to the left of that green one as well so plenty of life in the rocks and then the urchin. Unfortunately the other urchin has, uh, I've just noticed there, <laughs> One of my crabs seems to be having a fight, and there's there's one of my other rock flowers that he's fallen onto or something. Um, and again with the, I'll just turn off one of these. I've got more of these mushrooms from the 10 gallon, which came from Jonathan. And there's a couple of, there's a little name in there as well. But there's more of these uh, nice green mushrooms, different mix. Absolutely stunning little rock flower name there. Um, that was from Blackfish Marine. He's a really good supplier in the UK. It's very good prices. It's quite a small operation, but um, I think it's kind of like a, a garden room, garden shed with um, all his tanks in there and he imports stuff. I still want to know what creature it is that is pulling up bits of rocks. There's another rock flower there which is not getting much light um, and maybe needs a bit of a feed that's not looking the best. This one is absolutely stunning if it wasn't for um, uh, things keep on walking over it. But the I did hoover, oh, I say hoover, vacuum the sand bed last night, which I hadn't done for a long time, and it looks fantastic. Um, it wasn't looking bad anyway, but I did take a lot of uh, dirt and poo out of this tank last night. These are not rock flower anemones. They're a type of anemone, which I'm not quite sure. I got them off a fellow reefer six months, maybe a year ago actually now, uh, for about £10. Well, I say I got them, I got one of them for £10, and uh, one of them stayed as it is, and the other one split into two bit of Kenya tree which we'll need to remove soon because it's kind of a nemesis I mean there's chunks up the back there the, the tight it's almost as bad as Xenia but it's just more annoying I've uh, got another really nice rock flower there at the bottom excuse the zoom it's obviously just caught something there I'm catching a bit of flow and I've got another one there which is looking a bit tatty um, I wonder if with the flow improving it'll start to feed more I don't know what's happened there I think some of them have been moving about and now my other issue that I have with this tank. So I spotted one a few weeks ago. Just one lonely Aptasia, which has got somewhat bigger. Um, good old bit of coralline there, but the uh, urchin eats a lot of that. And there's my Xenia. I do love it, it looks great. Um, so yeah, I had that Aptasia there and I wasn't wanting to take this rock out of the 10 gallon because I knew there was Aptasia in it. So I kind of left it for ages and then eventually I spotted that there was an Aptasia in my tank anyway. So there's a couple on there. I think there's just a couple at the top. There's bound to be a couple of little Aptasia somewhere else in this rock. But there's definitely a couple at the top there. So I've got Aptasia in the narrow, which I was always trying to avoid. And I probably should have just taken this rock sooner and popped into the nano. But I didn't want to take that chance of putting Aptasia in because I knew it was in a tank that had Aptasia in it. But obviously I spotted that one up the, the back of the rock there. And I was like, well, you know, the game's over. You know, there's Aptasia in there. So if there's one, there will become more. So I've got a bit of a plan. The the 10 gallon, oh no, so just quickly. Um, got some clove polyps. They've not done a lot the last six months to a year, to be fair. Um, they just kind of sit there, kind of have it. Some of them are actually starting to spread a little bit now, more again. And then I've got my two clowns there which such a simple fish but very very pretty and I love that damsel like it. it's really hard to film under the you know blue lights with the blue fish and all these filters and stuff um, another cheeky bit of Xenia just some rocks with coralline on it and my, GS, my GSP mountain <laughs> um, I may there's a, I think there's another Aptasia under one of these as well some oh that might no that's just GSP and then we've got various hermit crabs doing what they do no one seems to have fought anyone or uh, killed anyone for shells, they all seem quite happy. Um, 
again that's another one of those names they've got a really cracking color for just being green but really happy with those so probably in the future i might get rid of gsp mountain and keep maybe a gsp pebble or rock uh, a bit smaller might chip that bit off the the bottom of the base there and then maybe get rid of the zinia arch and maybe go for something a bit lower and have lots of rock flower names um, I was going to change the scape totally, but now these two are very happy, like they've been there for a good few months now, really really happy where they are, look really healthy, and there's absolutely no way I'm getting them off that rock, so that bit escapes there to stay, unless I break off like the supporting legs and do something a bit lower, that's another option, um, and I think that's all of my names, there's, there's a few, there's been some purchasing going on, um, but yeah, so... To deal with that Aptasia, um, we'll come back and we'll have a look at the 10 gallon. So guys, we've seen this one briefly before. It's a cupboard with loads of my central heating pipes and stuff. It was never meant for a tank to go in. But I got the option of um, getting this rock now. A lot of the mushrooms we've seen in the reefer and the nano have come from this tank or a rock that was in this tank, um, which is this one of the big ones in here. And there's a lot of frags as well. Some of them have been fragged off. Chunks of corals have gone elsewhere. Um, a lot of came from good friend Jonathan. Now, I once I'd got all the mushrooms out a good few weeks ago, and obviously they went into the the reefer and the, the, that little uh, mushroom basket in the nano. I've still got loads of Aptasia in this tank, and I kind of thought um, I'm going to keep them. And even in this little crappy tank, I've got some coralline there growing on the tubes um, of the filters. Some at the top actually as well. You can just see it. So. Aptasia, Aptasia, um, there's a big chunk of sponge there, there's actually some growing in the nano in between the Xenia as well. Um, there's a sorty little sponge that's been, I mean this light's been off for a good couple of weeks, and there was a load of sponges under one of these rocks, uh, sorry, small mushrooms under one of these rocks that were still looked quite happy and healthy. So, Aptasia, good couple of bits of Aptasia in there, there's definitely one in that uh, Nem cup jar thing. Um, and there's a ton of Aptasia on that rock. So might start feeding them Reefroids. Um, and then the little project for the future might be to get myself half a dozen uh, or even three or four Bergia and Unibranks, get them breeding in here. Ideally, I'd like the Aptasia not to be on such a big rock because I want to be able to find the eggs later. But that's where a lot of these rocks that had, had frags on them that were taken off, they got taken out and uh, it leaves me with a much more bare tank. So hopefully I'll be able to see the, the nudie eggs um, and then get a load of them breeding in here, get them to clean out this tank as much as I can and then take what I've bred in here and pop them in the nano and hopefully I'll get the nano Aptasia free again. So that's the plan, although in the future that scape's probably going to end up as a, a rock flower and enemy tank, so not too worried about the odd Aptasia, but this is the plan, so Bergia and Udibrank at some point we'll get those and uh, we'll hopefully get them breeding, um, so that'll be a little fun project. Again, it only runs a little hang on back filter. The heater's not doing a lot because there's heating pipes in here as well. And I don't really need the light. I've just put that on for filming. It's a very basic setup. It's, it's a storage cupboard, but just a 10 gallon tank. But thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I'm looking forward to breeding the Bergia. Um, I do love stuff breeding and, and things like that. I'd love to be able to breed uh, like Bangai Cardinals and Clownfish maybe later on. Another day when I go a bit bigger or something like that. But there's loads of life in this tank as well. I mean, there's adaptation in the back wall there. Um, there's loads of Astrina stars and limpets and things. And I'm occasionally just throwing in bits of food just to keep some nutrients in there. And keep the Aptasia alive, which is not difficult. But hope you enjoyed, guys. A little update of the tanks and where I am. And uh, we'll hopefully get some more videos coming out soon and a bit more regularly. And uh, I'll catch you all next time.